the non-extinguishable lantern. Now that the demand for a non-refillable bottle has ceased to exist, I wish the inventors who would have been fussing over that sort of thing would try to contrive a non-extinguishable lantern. I wouldn't have thought it had not been that a year ago a man sold me what he claimed a non-extinguishable lantern. A lantern that you can carry in a hurricane and it won't go out. The wind may blow it out of your hand, but the light would still keep burning steadily. If a whirlwind should blow it up into the sky, it will keep on burning like a star. And all it cost was six shillings or a dollar and a half with a yard of wick thrown in. Of course, I fell for the lantern. But after I got the perfect lantern, I sat around in the evenings waiting for a real gale to blow so that I could enjoy it properly. Of course, it was as good as any other lantern for ordinary weather. And it did chores by its light both night and morning all last winter without having tested it in a real gale. Last week, we had a great blow, a gale that shook the houses, uprooted trees, and blew the tops off hay stacks, and took all kinds of liberties with the landscape. Happening to be out late, I hunted up the non-extinguishable lantern when I got home and started to put away the horse. When I reached the drive shed, the wind came around to the corner with a whoop. The light fluttered wildly for a couple seconds, and then went out leaving me in total darkness that was all the more total because I had to light for a while. Groping my way, I opened the dry shed door and the horse was good-natured enough to wait for me while I found a sheltered spot and relit the lantern. I was then unable to unhitch her without further trouble, but when we reached the stable door, the wind came at us and another exultant whoop and once more I was in darkness. To make matters worse, the horse positively refused to enter the stable without a light. She was afraid to go home in the dark. After struggling for a while, I attached the tie line to her bridle and led her up to the stable door so that I was able to get inside and hold her at the same time. In the shelter of the stall, I lighted the non-extinguishable wonder and the dryer was graciously pleased to enter. After she had been unharnessed, fed, and bedded, I started back to the dry shed to put away the buggy. Whoop whoop, said the wind, which by this time seemed to be enjoying this game of showing me where Moses was when the lantern went out. I tried to protect the lantern by hiding it under the flap of my raincoat, but it was no use. The wind crawled up the leg of my trousers and blew out the light again and then went whooping away into the next county. I did a little whooping just then myself that would have interested and perhaps shocked the good man who sold me the lantern. Then I stumbled in the dark until I got the buggy under shelter. By groping carefully around the dry shed door, I found the lantern again and started for the house, feeling for the path with my feet. And because of the experience, I moved to advise inventors to try their hands at making a really non-refillable, and I mean non-extinguishable lantern. If they managed it, I would buy one. For the man who sold me the wonder that I have put the idea in my head, and now I'll be happy till I get one. <laughs>